there uh, guys and girls this is the Prussian Prince uh, with another Total War Attila tournament match and this is going to be the Agony 2015 Team Championships group stage and it is Group G Agony 2015 Team Championships is a 2v2 tournament where you register uh, basically with two factions that you will be playing throughout the whole tournament. Uh, one has to be a tier 1 faction and uh, the other has to be tier 2. Um, so let me just pause the game for a moment and go over the rules a bit. So tier 1 you have um, tier 1 you have Alamans, Burgundians, Langobards, Alans and Ostrogoths. Tier 2 Eastern Romans, Western Romans, Sassanids, Huns, Jutes, Danes, Yeats, Saxons, Franks, Vandals, and Visigoths. And now, of course, in uh, the group stage, uh, we have uh, actually four themes per group, I believe. And that is indeed the case. Not all, the not all group stages, though, because some of them have five, I believe. So there is a difference in that regard. For instance, my group, I'm playing with Maximus. And this one, by the way, it's group C. It has five themes in it. And the, t the first two advance uh, to the next round. But anyway, in terms of uh, other rules, we have max six of the same per team, max four of the same uh, cav per team, max 14 melee cav per team, max 16 cav in total per team, so that's melee cav and skirmishing cav. Max 4 uh, missile cav per team. Max 4 pikes per team. Max 10 foot skirmishes per team. Max 4 noble alani cav. And general not included in restrictions. And uh, that would basically be it for the rules. Uh, now for map pickings. Well... It's basically up to the choice of the teams. Uh, one team pick, picks a map first and the other picks another. There is no real map pool uh, for the group stage. But yeah, time for me to go over the actual players this time around. So we have uh, we have Simon, actually a Serer and Karhu of VM playing against Simon and Jix uh, of ID and RTK respectively. Uh, and in this first game, we have Acerar playing as the Ostrogoths, Kar Karhu as the Huns, and Simon as the Burgundians, Jix as the Jutes. Uh, let me go over the builds. Uh, I'm going to go over the, let's see, the Burgundian build first. I'm guessing a bunch of Roll Lancers and Barb Lancers. Let's see. So we have, uh, what do we have? One. No. One. Two. Three, four Royal Lancers and probably four Barb Lancers. Yeah, one, two, three, four Barb Lancers. Indeed. Now let's uh, go over the rest of the Burgundian build. We have two Burgundian Warhounds in the back. Uh, these are all Bronze 1, the cavalry units, by the way, uh, just in case. And we do have some Noble Germanic Horsemen as well, two Noble Germanic Horsemen for the Burgundians. Uh, we also have two scattershot hurlers brought uh, on the field. Interestingly enough, uh, three of those. My bad. And the Royal Burgundian general. It's a cap gen with a uh, brace. We also see on the battlefield that there are two Burgundian axemen. Uh, so uh, very very interesting Burgundian build here for sure. I think. Now let's go over the jutes. Uh, so. Um, Wow, this, this is also pretty strong, I think. Uh, <laughs> we see three Warhounds, alright. Definitely interesting choice. We see the Nordic Warlord Brace General as well, supported by three Royal Huskarls, Bronze 1. Then there are more Royal Huskarls up front as well, looks like. Uh, so three over here, and three over here are also Bronze 1, and then, let's see. Is it 1, 2, 3? three four okay so that one is a huskal bronze one so we do actually have six roll huskal's bronze one and then 
just two regular host girls bronze one as well and four warhounds wow not three <laughs> and we also see some nordic curlers make that six warhounds wow okay we also see some nordic curlers again and uh seen lots of Nordic horse lords looks like four of them bronze one one is bronze two though so I do really like this composition uh, that they have brought and why am I hitting play <laughs> I, it's time to go over uh, the other teams build uh, let's see the Ostrogoths well uh, luckily for me making it very very easy by uh, putting all the cavalry in the front so we have one two three Four noble Germanic horsemen. Oh wait, what? This can't be right. It's max four of the same calf per team. Perhaps the rules changed in between the games or something like this because... Uh, but I'm sure we would have had more royal answers if that was the case. So Maybe they are breaking the rules, maybe they aren't breaking the rules. I don't know because this is one, two, three, four, five, six... Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven noble Germanic horsemen? Okay. Uh, not entirely sure about how, if they broke rules or not. I think they did, but not 100% sure. Of course, can't confirm it because I don't know what the rules were exactly when this game was played. Because they did change according to patches and some more testing and so on and so forth. Uh, anyway, uh, that seems to be the cap contingent for the Ostrogoths. Uh, looks like a few of them are bronze one. Two are bronze one indeed. Now it's so difficult to go over the build, but we have Royal Sayunis General with Brace. Let's see the rest of the Ostrogothic build. So we have some Gothic Warband on the field. Looks like three four of those nope it's it's just three then we have some Thracian warriors on the left flank some Thracian warriors on the right flank so two two of those in total and there are some Germanic hurlers three four five Germanic hurlers and let's see if there's any more from the Ostrogoths doesn't seem to be the case uh, now for the Huns, for the Huns. Oh, actually, we do have two Germanic packs up front. What am I saying for the Ostrogoths? Huns, Huns, Huns. Step Chieftain, Bronze Three with Brace. And let's see, we also have some cavalry units. Looks like six Step Cataphracts in total. Bronze Two, yeah, two on three on each flank. Then we have a lot of Chosen War Warriors. So three on the left. Three on the right, or is it? No, it's four on the right. Okay, is one of them a regular or? Or no, it's it's four on the left and four on the right, so that's eight in total. So was it? It was probably max eight of the same unit or something when uh, this uh, match was uh, played. So probably they're not breaking the rules. Why would they break the rules intentionally anyway? I don't think uh, they would. So uh, let's hit play because we finally were able to go over the builds. Yay! Took some time though. <laughs> uh, that is for sure. Uh, looks like there might be a very quick engagement here because uh, the Burgundians and the Jutes are pushing up very quickly, but perhaps a bit too quickly because infantry support is not there. So uh, yeah, it looks like they're just gonna wait for a little bit. But yeah, they're definitely gonna go for the aggressive moves here because they have the potential to do so. They have they have much better, uh, a lot better units for uh, an offensive maneuver for sure. And uh, now here come the barbed lancers up front. Uh, looks like and with the royal lancer support, uh, they're not gonna try and go in though. And looks like the warhounds have been released. They're gonna go for the skirmishes here. Should kill the skirmishes easily, but this is a wasted charge again of the barbed lancers. Not really killing the noble Germanic horsemen, and it's also in this uh, cool little formation called wedge. 
And looks like more engagements happening over here. Not the best cap charges from the Barb Lancers, to be fair, though. Kind of got stuck by the Nord Course Lords. But still, though, overwhelming this flank very, very quickly is uh, our Simon and Jixi here, the Burgundian team. Oh, Noble Germanic Horsemen here getting into the Huskars, doing a lot of damage. Very nice charge. But some Barb Lancers with Warhound support should do fine against these Noble Germanic Horsemen. More barbed lancers on this flank as well, which can start charging into those cataphracts. But the Royal Burgundian general needs to be pulled up for morale support. Ooh, another Royal Lancer charge into the step cataphracts should destroy the step cataphract unit without a problem. Thing is, though, now the chosen wars are coming into the fray, so they'll do a lot of damage. They're very, very strong in the in the main engagement, but there are so many huskarls here that it, it still might be really bad for. Uh, the Hunts. Uh, this unit looks like it actually got into Thracian, so that's a very nice charge. Thing is, though, is it actually worth it? Because, yes, it's doing a lot of damage, but hmm. It is actually stopping that step cataphract, so it could be worth it. Uh, now, it does allow these uh, scattershot hurlers to do a lot of damage, so now these chosen wars are going to take significant damage from these skirmishes, but actually barely any of them are taken it so double general engagement here against these royal huskarls not a bad move because they can die to charges though look over here the hunts are losing their left flank quite significantly royal lancers here still making through but as you can see not cost effective at all because uh what happened here is that their charge got stopped by these uh by the enemy hurdlers but as you can see here it looks like the royal Sionis general is going to engage here which means that it's going to be the end of him we have the Nordic Horse Lords uh, rear charging now, the Royal Sionis. And it's, it's already taken some damage, and now to this rear charge, it's gonna be dead. Royal Bur Burgundian in general needs to be careful because he might be overextending here. Oh, he's, he's about to get charged by the enemy general, but I still wonder if that's gonna make a dent into this Royal Burgundian general. It uh, looks like a nice charge from the Nordic Horse Lords over here against the Thracian Warriors. Uh, left flank not looking as uh, good for uh, for the Burgundian uh, Jutes team, but it looks like there's some engagements over here, but not really too important. Ooh, and the general is dead. Not quite sure which one is dead or where it actually died. Has to be, yeah, this one is dead, I suppose, but it doesn't really say said general nearby. So, yeah, it looks like uh, it's looking extremely good right now for Burgundian Jutes team. Because one of the generals is dead, and this one is still alive, but at this point, it's just, yeah, they're gonna get some rear charges, but on what? On Warhounds, still Royal Huskarls pushing through. And these chosen war warriors have done significant damage, but is it really enough? questionable. Royal Burgundian General also coming around here uh, for some rear uh, shots, uh, rear charges that is, to finish off all these remaining units. Look at these chosen war warriors here, duking it out against these cavalry units and they should do quite well against them as well. But this uh, rear charge is going to destroy this whole chosen war warrior, no question about it. Ooh, the damage done to it. Let's see how many of them died on the charge. Looks like basically everyone died on the charge. Very few ores left here. And the ones that are left do not like their chances of survival here. Uh, these chosen ores also routing and more of them wavering and gonna be routing soon as well. So yeah, looking, uh, looks like, uh, Jixi and Simon are going to take the first game, and this is not a best of three, by the way, it's just two games in group stage. Uh, so it can be a draw, it can be a loss, or it can be a win. A loss doesn't give the team any points, a draw gives one point, and I believe a win gives three points. So, as you can see here, uh, all these Huskarls did very well, and I think the Ostrogoths are maybe not the best pick for uh, a faction. Uh, I here but the hunts definitely are a very good choice so they probably should have switched the ostrogoths to another faction when they registered because they aren't the, the best or they're not that great they used to be extremely good though uh, in previous patches but yeah the burgundians doing very very well here 
uh, with the cavalry. Well, actually, I say that, but these three real answers kind of got wasted. Uh, now for Chixi's units, you can see the Huskarls doing extremely well. Even these Burgundian Axemen too. Kind of expected though. Uh, they just had so much infantry that they overwhelmed. Well, I say that, but the Huns also had a eight chosen war warriors, so that is not easy to break through either, but it did not work out for them. I would have preferred to see more regular war warriors instead, but these guys are pretty strong too, but it means that the, the army is going to be fairly small, as you can see, 1380 here, and they're still very, very squishy against cav charges, but yeah, that is the first game, so I shall see you in game number two. This is game two of the match. Uh, it could be a 1-1 now, or it could be a 2-0 for Simon and Jixi, but honestly, I think it's going to be a 2-0 based on the faction setups. I mean, it's just going to be really difficult for, uh, for their opponents to pull it back here against such, uh, such a strong faction set up for uh, for Simon and Jixi. Uh, Carco and Assessor are going to have a really uphill battle with what they have chosen, I think. But anyway, let's go over the builds uh, again. Uh, looks like they have changed though. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, Burgundians, uh, let's see. Well, okay, fine. I'm going to go over the general first because this is a blob. We have Royal Burgundian Brace General. Then we have four Germanic archers make that five make that six germanic archers <laughs> then we see a bunch of uh lancers as usual uh, let's see how many we have on the left three royal lancers bronze one and then let's see some more royal lancers have to be on the field let's see so three on the left bronze one and then one on the right bronze one so four royal lancers bronze one and then we have some barb lancers as well how many of them looks like uh this time it's three barb lancers bronze one we also have some noble germanic horsemen two of those of vanilla we see two pikes on the field two and uh, germanic pikes that is Let's see what else do we have. Oh, a third one, which I did not notice because this is a huge blob of units. Uh, no actual sword units. And yeah, bronze one brace general, royal Burgundian general. But I think I already went over that. And now for the jutes, which is even more of a mess to cast. Let's see. Nordic warlord brace general. Then we have. Uh, what is this? Okay, I'm gonna go and count the Warhounds first. So one, two, three, four, five, six Warhounds. Okay. Uh, then we see two Royal Huskarls, bronze one in the back, two Huskarls, bronze one on the right, uh, two Royal Huskarls, bronze one on the left, and uh, Looks like we also have more Royal Huskarls in the center. Two bronze one, so six of those bronze one in total. Very, very potent units in melee, for sure. Uh, then for the cavalry contingent, well, we actually have an, one more Nordic Hurler. Uh, for the cav, probably Nordic Horse Lords, I assume. So yeah, one, two, three, four Nordic Horse Lords. One is bronze two, the others are bronze one. So that is the build for them. And now the Huns and the, why do I only see Hun units? And Huns and Ostrogoths now, all right. So let's see, Ostrogoths first, Royal Sionis General with Brace. Then we see some Germanic crossmen on, on the field, interesting choice. Uh, we also have, let's see, over here, six Noble Germanic Swordsmen, they're really good at tanking. Uh, supporting three noble gothic lancers, two silver, one, one bronze, three. And we also have four noble Germanic horsemen up front, supporting one, two, three, four, five Germanic hurlers. Uh, very, very interesting choice. 
Now for the Huns, uh, looks like they have the flanks, so... Yeah, Step Chief, then uh, General, again with Brace. On the right we have two First Wave Lancers and a Step Cataphract, supporting a Step Tribes people. On the left, we have, uh, let's see, four Elite Hunnic Lancers, supporting two Step Tribes people and three War Warriors. And in the center we have three more War Warriors as well so let's hit play because uh yeah i think this this seems to be like it's gonna be another quick game as it's five minutes but yeah it's taking me a while because i have to go over all these builds so yeah uh, 2v2 really really hard to cast the builds but yeah again i definitely think like it's gonna be difficult for the ostrogoths and the huns to make it work here here come the Burgundians. They're gonna get their charge speed and speed lowered by the Germanic hurlers. Something to keep in mind, but they're still gonna get some pretty good charges off onto the Lancers of the Huns. And again, these barbed Lancers are doing very well against the Lancers of the Huns here. Warhounds should be released soon against the Elite Hunnic Lancers, but now the melee cav follow-up is coming in against all these units. Step tribes people going to die soon, but the Barb Lancers looks like they are gonna route before anything else, so nice charge here with the Royal Lancers into the Noble Germanic Horsemen, now supporting uh, more Noble Germanic Horsemen charging in here. Warhounds doing weird things, but the War Dogs have been released. Uh, Royal Lancer charge here is... Barb Lancer actually is losing, and this is the Tonic Lancer destroyed another Barb Lancer very interesting but the fight over here should be going very badly for the Ostrogoths and uh, for the Ostrogoths and the Hunts because as you can see here all these Royal Huskarls coming into the fight more Huskarls as well they're gonna start chopping down all these horses and these war warriors because they're flanking them it's just wow look at these wars dropping brace activated as well and the general of the Huns is engaging the noble Germanic horsemen here, so I think this is going to be the end of that general. And now over here, elite Hunnic Lancers going down, but war warriors coming in to support the fray here, so I think this is going to be really good for the wars. Oh, this is type step tribes people though, and the wars are walking here, not running. Uh, again, looks like this Nordic horse lord is going to die, but royal Lancers shall support, and uh, they should do a lot of damage. Looks like. Whoa, this Royal Sion is coming in, but it's going to get some nice kills, though, onto these units. Because on, I think it does actually connect with the Royal Huskarls as well, and it, yes, it does lots of kills. The Tonic Lancers charging again, but not the best charges, though. Center, though, has broken for uh, for the Jutes, but I say that, but Royal Huskarls are already plugging that issue. These ores getting destroyed here by the Royal Huskarls, though. Uh, Royal Lancers charging in and destroying the Noble Germanic Horsemen. And over here, Royal Sayonis engaging, which is not a good idea because it's going to start getting targeted as it is right now. General is going to start falling for the Ostrogoths as already... Uh, wow, the Step Chieftain barely lives with 15. This flank is just gone for the Ostrogoths. Just too many Huskarls over here to... You know, but wow, this these guys actually made it here into these units, the uh, Noble Germanic Horsemen, and have caused some damage, but not a lot, it seems. These Huskarls are gonna die to the Ur Warriors and Step Tribes people, but this flank going really badly, as I said. Oh, and the Royal Sionis General is dead for the Ostrogoths. This flank should just completely collapse right now, and. Uh, Germanic crossbowmen are on the field, they got 28 kills, but now they're just gonna die to Nordic Horse Lords. Uh, extra units on the field still for uh, Jutes and uh, Burgundians. Germanic archers, uh, late game, are gonna do a lot of work. And look at this Royal Sionis general, it's still not in a great spot. Step Chieftain rounding off the field. Yeah, at this point, it's basically over for the VM team. Uh, Jixi and Simon should be taking this any moment now as you can see here all these Huskars mopping up the units 
Noble Germanic Swordsman, yes, they're in shield wall, so they will do quite well, but these guys don't have attack orders or something. It's, yeah, definitely looking weird here. So the Noble Germanic Swordsmen are now going to get fired upon with Flaming Shot. Some of them are burning, as you can see here. So yeah, more engagements over here. Brawl Burgundian General just destroying Germanic Hurlers, but at this point it's... The result is known. So Noble Germanic Swordsmen are going to rear charge these Germanic Pikes, but I mean, I don't really know how much of a difference they can actually make here. Noble Germanic Swordsman gonna be rounding off the field now and it looks like uh, Simon and Jixi are gonna take in my opinion a pretty easy 2-0 victory here and I mean a lot of it has to do with the factions of course but they also played slightly better than their opponents here. Uh, but yeah very very good job. Look at these Huskals, some of them getting an insane amount of kills uh but yeah that is game and match so looks like they're gonna be getting three points in this group hope you guys and girls enjoyed if you want to see more don't forget to comment or subscribe follow me on facebook twitter and google plus share the video and i'll see you next time